pay to play or free to play? That question has been making the rounds through the Hytale community recently, as a lack of gameplay news has led us to debate more real world topics. Unfortunately, many debaters choose to debate from the perspective of the consumer rather than that of the business selling Hytale. So we're going to look at it from their perspective. Let's start off with how much Hytale would cost if it were pay to play. Due to the visual similarities of Minecraft, they won't want to make the game more expensive than Minecraft because they seem similar at first glance, so any newcomers to block games may choose the cheaper option. Minecraft's price changes for each version, with PC editions costing about $40 Canadian, console versions selling for about $30, and mobile at about $10. I'll assume that Hytale will have two price points, one for mobile and one for other devices. Mobile could realistically be anywhere from $2 to $10, and for PC, I'd put it at about $30 Canadian, which is about $20 US. Hypixel Studios have said in the past that their monetization would take the form that was best for their community, but that was a few years ago, so who knows if they'll stick to that. Obviously, they will still go with whatever makes them a lot of money, but they will think of us when they decide how to make that money. It's also a little bit ambiguous, because we don't know who they mean by community. Is it current Hytale fans? Potential players? Modders and YouTubers for the game? We don't know, and that will certainly affect how they decide to monetize their game. Before we get fully into the pros and cons, let's address some common misconceptions. A really big one I see is that pay to play would mean no in-game purchases, which is just wrong. Hytale have said that you will be able to monetize Hytale content in-game, and the game was made specifically because the Hypixel Minecraft server was no longer allowed to make a lot of money off of their Minecraft content, so it would be hypocritical for them to not allow modders and server hosts to make money. There is also a related idea that a free-to-play game would need invasive monetization strategies such as making all mods paid, limiting cosmetics which can be used for free or made for free, or even worse things like paywalling some of Adventure Mode. I doubt that their in-game monetization will change either way, because a free-to-play model will have a larger initial audience which should make up for the money lost by not charging for the game, and therefore more aggressive monetization would be unnecessary. Basically, what I'm saying is more players equals more people buying stuff equals not needing to make as much off of every player. Some people say Minecraft doesn't have microtransactions, but it does, in the form of Realms and the Bedrock Marketplace. Some others point to the Bedrock Marketplace to show why mod marketplaces suck, but the Minecraft one specifically sucks for its own reasons, which you can find if you do a quick search. It's hard to say which model would lead to a larger long-term player base, which is obviously the most important part. I'm of the opinion that people stick around for post-launch content, not because they bought a game. And while free-to-play will almost certainly have a higher spike, it'll also drop more after the launch hype goes away because it reached a broader audience, and there's no way to know if it'll leave more or less players than pay-to-play would. Fall Guys was paid and only had a few weeks in the spotlight, whereas Fortnite was free and had it for years. But on the other hand, the finals is free, but fell off hard after its initial popularity, and Minecraft is paid and is still very, very popular. The common denominator there is replayability versus content updates. Fortnite had weekly updates to keep people engaged. Minecraft has yearly updates but can be played forever without losing interest. Fall Guys and the finals both lacked significant changes to the gameplay loop, so people got bored and moved away from the games. The hope for Hytale is that Adventure Mode will tide people over until mods begin to be made, and then the mods will act as this post-launch content. How will Hypixel Studios make its money aside from game sales? They will likely sell cosmetics, mods, and real-life merch. It is also possible that you have to pay to play on certain servers, like Roblox has with, I believe, Bloxburg, can buy server hosting, like Minecraft Realms, and also the plethora of third-party hosting sites, they could even possibly make money from ads, although I personally doubt they will. And finally, they could make people pay for access to modding tools, or to publish their mods. A few of these are controversial, so let's break them down. Paid mods mean that modders may be in it for the money, which people fear will lead to low-quality crash grabs. I'd suggest that Hypixel Studios introduced a refund system, like Steam has, where players may refund a mod if they used it for under a certain amount of time and decide they don't like it. This wouldn't affect quality small mods that only add a few items, because if the items are good, players will want to use them in the world long term, so won't refund them. This does mean that content may thin out in story mods past wherever the mark the refund ends, but that is already a problem with full games and cannot be avoided. YouTube reviews will also be good to gauge the quality of a mod. They could also take advantage of the Hytale Creators Union, a group of modders who will mod for Hytale when it releases, and have them review mods to get a badge of approval. Any mod with a badge, you know, will be high quality. 
Having to pay for modding tools would be very disappointing and I think unlikely, but it is possible that you'll need to pay to publish mobs onto the marketplace. Mobs? Mods. This is because modders could recreate paid cosmetics fairly easily and upload them for free, which is outright theft of another person's property, whether they're charging for it or not. While it isn't the greatest idea, as it will discourage people from posting free mods, it would also prevent the marketplace from being flooded with trash. Now we finally get to the pros and cons. It's hard to say if free to play or pay to play would bring in a bigger audience. At first, a free game will have a bigger audience, but it will inevitably peter out a lot more than a pay to play game would. Minecraft players are also more likely to try Hytale at first if it's free, but if the game does well, they'll probably try it out either way, just a bit longer after its release. If Hytale is free, console players won't need to pay to use online services, which cost like $80 a year or something crazy. This will lead to more people being able to play with their friends or online, which is more fun for a lot of people than single player, and will give a better audience retention for console players. Don't believe me? I stopped playing my favorite video game at the time, Splatoon 2, when Nintendo began their online subscription service, and stopped playing Fortnite when my live gold ended. This was before you could play free games for free on Xbox. While Hytale isn't an online exclusive game, everyone wants to play games with their friends, and online minigames will be super replayable for players who don't like building or doing other adventure mode things. A downside of free to play is that if the adventure mode is too popular among players, they might never play online, which would mean they wouldn't buy mods or skins. Not ideal for Hypixel Studios, obviously. I don't think this is likely to happen, because modding and servers are supposed to be a large part of the game, but it may be a consideration for them. In the same light, pay to play guarantees Hypixel make some money quickly from pre-orders and purchases, which would be good if the game were to die out very fast. Again, it is super unlikely, because the aim for Hytale is to be a long-lasting platform, but again, they will have to consider it when they're deciding. The money they make would also doubtfully make back the money Riot invested into it, so they'll probably want to avoid this being the reason to go pay to play. If Hytale is free, more people will try it. Players from other genres may see it on YouTube and decide to give it a try, as Hytale is, at its base, an RPG. Players are more likely to try a free game than a paid one, so a free game would help pull in players from communities like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which is a fundamentally similar game to Adventure Mode, but people might not realize that at first. An issue with free-to-play is that getting new accounts is super easy. Get banned from a server? Bam! Make a new account for free, and you're good to go back to whatever you're doing. Not the most ideal. Minecraft has ways to get free accounts. I don't know if the same will be true for Hytale if it were paid, but I'd expect that they'd have better security. So, maybe Hypixel would want to move into a paid to keep the number of accounts down and make sure the people who get banned are actually banned. On the topic of accounts, if one player wants to have an account on their desktop, but they also want to be able to play Hytale on a Switch or a phone when they aren't at their house, would they have to buy the game for a whole second time, or can they buy it once across several devices? But then they can't really stagger the prices between phones and consoles. Eventually, they'd either end up with a very complex system, players needing to buy many copies of the game, which is not good for the community, a $40 mobile game, or a $10 PC game none of which are super attractive prospects to iPixel Studios. Fortunately for pay-to-play fans, this is a problem that they would most likely tackle after deciding that they were going to be pay-to-play instead of a factor they'd use to determine it. People arguing for free-to-play may point out that it was mentioned in a job listing a while ago, but that doesn't mean anything. John Hendricks himself said that it was mostly meaningless, they just wanted someone with experience in that area, and at this point, iPixel Studios themselves don't even know what it'll be. They might have ideas, plans even, but I doubt anything concrete has been laid out or put into the game. For now, they will focus on making the game. When making their decision, they will think about all sorts of things. They'll consider past trends in gaming, how much they want to make at the minimum, what they think will maintain players and bring modders in, and things we can't even dream of. In the meantime, the community needs to chill out. Just because Hytale could be free to play doesn't mean the game is totally ruined. As I said, a free-to-play game could possibly have lighter monetization than a pay-to-play one due to the higher player count. People championing play-to-play -play also shouldn't be harassed for being dumb or in denial. Factually, we know nothing, and it is insane to assume we do, and even worse to insult somebody for assuming something different than you. The main determining factor in my mind will be who they think the community is. For modders, they could do something that would be like players play for the game, then they get X amount of high coin to spend on mods or cosmetics, giving modders a kickback from game sales. Alternatively, 
if Hypixel thought a free game would lead to more people buying mods, they could give modders more favorable revenue splits, allowing modders to make more money. If they consider the community to be the current fans, I figure they'll do whatever allows them to make the most content free, whether they think that's free or paid to play. If they think the potential players are the community, getting it to the most people would be ideal. So again, we shift towards free, maximizing possible community size and eliminating financial barriers. But then the game needs to be good enough to keep people there. I'll briefly mention the possibility of a subscription-based game, but that isn't going to happen. Like, I just cannot see that being the right choice for Hytale. There may be subscription services in-game, like a mod pass, sort of like the Xbox Game Pass, but for mods, but the game itself has got to be a one-time purchase or it will fizzle out and die. The subscription service does not work well for kids, which I'd assume will be Hytale's main age demographic regardless of its rating. I guess while we're talking about subscription services, I should tell you to subscribe to my channel. That's all for the video, have a great morning, evening, afternoon, or night, and stay happy.